Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Emilio, it's a pleasure to be with you again. We've, we've done this a few times before, but it's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. I mean, it's, it's not, uh, to me as a journalist, it's, it's no wonder that Mexico was chosen, certainly no wonder that Televisa was chosen. Every time we speak, I think the number of hours that Televisa produces keeps going up, right? What are you, 90,000 now? 90,000 hours, and, and, and the, the complicated thing about it is trying to produce the best quality hours, not just the amount, no? And, and, uh, but I believe that all the, the people working on the creative side and the production side make a, do a very good job. Great, excellent. All right, so Mexico is MIPCOM's country of honor. I guess my first questions are, why Mexico? Why content in Spanish and why Televisa? Well, I believe that, that first uh, Spanish, as, as you know, is the depending on the data that you use, but it's either the second or the third most spoken language in the world. No? And I believe that that's why it makes it very important. And, and Mexico is either the first or the second economy also in the Spanish-speaking world. So I believe that makes it in this industry, the entertainment industry, very, very important. No? The, the content industry is the most value-added industry in, in the region. And, and, and that makes a lot of sense because of the amount of, of hours that we produce as the leaders in, in this. And obviously that for Mexico, I believe it's a strategic opportunity being right next to the United States because then you have close to 60 million people that, that speak Spanish there and basically 65, 70% of them are from Mexican origin. You know? So, and I see Mexico also as, as an economy that we see uh, this economy depending on oil, but I believe that with the, you know, all, all the reforms uh, that have been going on in the last couple of years for Mexico obviously changes uh, to other different dynamics and obviously it's, it's a land of opportunities for, for us as Mexicans but also for, for international companies to go in. So I believe that it was a very good choice and we're very proud as Mexicans to be able to be uh, you know, the, the country of choice for this year. Excellent, excellent. And. Um so the Mexican TV market has certainly evolved since you became CEO of the company, which is now, it was 1997? 1997, yes. So that was a long time ago. We were and young and irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> How have you... We're still irresponsible, by the way, no. <laughs> no well. How have you seen the Mexican TV market evolve in these years? And what role has Televisa played in, in helping that development? No, I believe that the, all the environment has really changed a lot. Uh, and we have numbers that back then, uh, penetration of pay television was only around 18 to 20 percent. Uh, that has grown to 50 or 50 plus percent right now. And it's not just the penetration in number of subscribers, but it's the amount also of channels that have come in into these uh, new technologies, because obviously the technology for cable and satellite has made uh, the possibility that instead of having maybe 50 or 60 channels, you have 200, 300 channels. No? So that environment has changed a lot and competition in the production of content has obviously changed for this uh, uh, market. Also, internet back in 1997 was zero penetration. I mean, it was just email, no? maybe. And now uh, it's more than 50% penetration in Mexico. Also cable and, well, pay television and internet penetration is growing at around 20% uh, per year. So obviously that's gonna grow still for the next few years uh, a lot. And I believe that where Televisa has been positioned is in the production and distribution of content since we started. And we have been able to, to use these new platforms and to produce uh, niche also uh, programming because back then suddenly a minority was maybe 100,000 or 50,000, so it didn't make a lot of sense to produce uh, for that small amount. But now the minorities, and, and if you take all the Spanish-speaking world, suddenly minorities are a million, two million, or three million persons. No? So, so Televisa has changed a lot in their traditional way of producing uh, the content and, and, and to change in producing content for the different platforms and, and, and the use of those platforms to, to enrich the, the experience. And, and certainly, Televisa now offers uh, so much more than just telenovelas. I mean, you produce across a broad, broad range of content. Telenovelas have obviously and are the, our, our best uh, uh, 
production, our best uh, product, but obviously we are now in the business, not only, I mean, we have done comedy and musicals and a lot of things, obviously sports is a, a very important part, but we're also now on the, in the business of formats because at the end, uh, we are a creative company that don't, not just only produces uh, stories, but produces ideas, no? And I believe that those ideas, when you take them out of Mexico to other countries and you have uh, the, the, the people that you work with, with new ideas and with new things coming into this original format, obviously it, it enriches the format and, and, and builds a better, a right. better program. No? So, so formats also is a very important part of what we do right now. Absolutely. So you mentioned that the landscape has changed so much and, and certainly also viewers are viewing differently and we'll get to that in a moment. But how is Televisa adapting to this new landscape? It's, uh, I believe that first you need to, to do its trial and error, no? because there's a lot of these new technologies that you don't know if they're gonna go uh, or they're gonna be there for a long time. But I mean, I believe that we need to try in every technology. No? Obviously the storytelling process is basically the same. It's really uh, providing the best story that, that, that we have and uh, with the best uh, quality production that we can do. But now I believe that Obviously, there's two things that we can do. The optimizing of the usage of Windows, that, that this means not just producing for over the air, but maybe producing uh, for certain platforms only, or maybe start instead of over the air from in, in paid television or actually through the internet or through or, or, or other platforms. And also the usage of these platforms to really have a second screen uh, idea that really, instead of being one way, the way it was traditionally that you just deliver the content, is how to interact and interact as much as possible uh, with the viewer. And this builds a better experience for the viewer. And obviously for us, it, it, it has a lot of input into the program to, to understand it to, and, and to make the, 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 the changes that we uh, do and, and that we built through this production process. We have a, a very good example about, about this, and I have a video that I want to show because we have Channel 5, who is an over-the-air network, and the way Channel 5 has completely changed into being a, a, a target to young audiences and really be a part of not only giving the entertainment to, to the people, but also having this uh, feedback from the people and really changing the environment of, of how Channel 5 works. So, if uh, we could play the, the, the video. Canal 5 ha cambiado su imagen y su audiencia también ha cambiado. Ellos quieren escaparse de su realidad, pero parte de ese respiro lo encuentran en el prime time. Tráfico, estrés, roben. Así es como se ve el 70% de tu vida. Solo el 30% de nuestro tiempo lo dedicamos a hacer cosas divertidas. Dije divertidas. ¿Sí? Cuando no estés en este mundo horrible y gris, queremos que estés en PEN. Conéctate con un mundo que te saca del promedio, que es arriesgado, que te cuenta cosas que no se dicen cotidianamente. Un mundo que evoluciona por ti. Con tus comentarios, likes y troleos, le das forma a nuestro contenido. Trolear, viralizar, nacimos aquí y no nos vamos a ir. Por eso, cuando prendes la tele, encendes una red de entretenimiento. Los programas de televisión despliegan estrategias transmedia que elevan el uso de celulares, compus y tablets hasta un 53% mientras ves PM Canal 5. Por una razón muy sencilla. Sabemos que ahí te vamos a encontrar. Porque PM tiene gente que está en constante evolución. Gente que se mueve. Adáptate o muere. Por eso nuestras campañas hablan cuando nadie lo hace. Ya llegó la primavera y se terminó la espera. Y se ve como ningún canal se ve. PM vive en todas las plataformas con propuestas concretas de entretenimiento. PM salta de la pantalla y va a buscarte a ti, donde quiera que estés. No te saques de onda porque estamos cambiando. Y esto apenas empieza. This is one of the examples, and another one that, that it's very interesting is that when you see our programming going through Univision in, in, in the United States, 
It's incredible the amount of tweets or interaction that are done in English, although the, the programming is in, in Spanish. Spanish. So, so you see the importance of the bilingual community in, in that country, that is, uh, they, they can watch their content in Spanish, but they can use their native language or the language of the country, in this case, to interact with, with right. the audience. Right, it's, it's um, a little mind-boggling at how quickly everything is moving forward and changing. Um, and in, in that vein, we are facing a very interesting dynamic between professional content and user-generated content. What's your view of the future regarding this dynamic in the market? Well, when, when this started, I believe that first we, we never knew and we actually now do not know where this is going to end up. No. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of platforms that have been there for a small amount of time and uh, a lot of them that have been there for a long time and they're going to be there uh, uh, for more time. So I believe that first you need to participate in all of these uh, platforms. But what we have learned over time is that when, uh, let's say, a platform like YouTube started, it started as user-generated videos, no short form uh, videos that were uh, generated by the users. And, and, and a lot of people said that the future was there and that professional content was not going to be even close to what the user-generated right. content was. And what you see now is that you have all these uh, videos produced by, by the general public that are there, and, and, and some of them do uh, millions of views. But at the end, most of the, the, the conversations, most of the content that is there and that people are using is professional content. So, uh, so you see that around what a program is airing, when it is airing, there's a lot of conversations going around. Uh, the advantage also is time shifting about, you know, really having the ability to watch the program that you want to watch whenever you want to watch it. So that obviously makes it very easy. And I believe that the advantage that Televisa has, and I believe that is where the companies need to work on a bright future, is that if you really have the most of the distribution platforms that you can have to have your content there, you're going to be in a very good place for the future. Because the, it's not just a question of the quality production, but it's how you deliver it to the, to the end user, no? and how fast can you deliver it to, to the end user. So I believe since 1930 that we started the, the, our radio station, we were very focused on that. It was the, the production of content and the distribution. Obviously, back then, the only distribution platform there was was radio, no? and now, so obviously, these technologies make that not just, uh, I mean, just in the internet, and you have six or seven platforms through through the internet. So, positioning ourselves in the distribution part of the of the of, of the chain is very important. Right, because even though we don't know what platform may emerge as the more important one, if you are everywhere to begin with, then you can grow and adapt to the market. And and you need to adapt the content to that because it's you know you cannot have the same content in right. the different platforms. You need to understand how each platform is working, how the user is using that platform to adapt the content uh, to those platforms. And suddenly, like I said, it's some of our content uses all of the platforms and some of them uses just once. Right. So how do you see viewing patterns change over the next few years? I imagine you have a focus group at home of the next generation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you observe them? <laughs> no, I believe that, that if you see now, it's uh, everybody is video now. I, I believe a lot of people are watching more video now than ever. No, And like I said, the advantage of these platforms is that you can uh, achieve access to content from around the world. Uh, so I believe that, that obviously the production of video, the production of, of, of television, the production of programs is going to be very, very important. And like I said before, but I, I, I see two very important avenues here. It's first, how can you enrich the experience to the user? Mm. And it's not just a question that they can back to you through Twitter or Facebook or whatever. It's how you can use that second or third screen in, in, in building a, a stronger uh, experience to the user. And obviously, having the time shifting. I, I believe that people now that have access to a lot of more content that, that, that was there before, obviously, you depend to have maybe less time of that person than what, what you had before. No? So right. I believe that time shifting, that people really can watch their content in any device that they want at any hour that they want make it very important. And, 
and you make a, a more user conscious uh, product that 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 that, uh, that a company conscious product. I believe that that the user needs to have the ability to to do all these kind of things to achieve to to access to your content. And they need many options, right, yes. to get to your content, right? Um, what is the role of technology in this new landscape? We have looked at technology in, in, in two ways. First is when technology puts the rules to the content, and this gets uh, when you see a platform, let's, let's say like Instagram, that puts, a, let's say, a rule about the 15 seconds video. No? So it's how you can use better the, the application. So you, I believe that for, for that small amount of seconds you need to have a, to to be riskier and to be more edgy to have uh, really a success on those 15 seconds, and then you have the other side, that it's uh, the use of technology that doesn't need to fail because now, you know, when you see streaming video, no? streaming video is a great example because now, you just press play and you don't even care about where is it coming from and and, and you don't even think that it's going to fail. And, and streaming video is a very complicated technological ad advancement, no? and, and I believe that we need obviously to, to use those kind of, of technology achievements for the distribution of the content, because people are expecting for that technology to work, and the advantage is that with that technology working, you can achieve you know, one hour or two hours or three hours of, of, of video. So I believe that, that, that that's uh, uh, a very important issue, and also, uh, like, like I was saying, is to create a better experience, you, we really need to access the second and the third screens. We have also a video that I want to show of a production that we want to do in 2015, where the tablet is part of the show, not just... Uh, uh, so if you have a tablet and if you have an access to internet, you're going to have a greater experience. You're not going to lose anything if you just watch it on television, but if you have the access to the tablet, it's you're going to have... A, yeah, so if we want to put... the the video of logout.
danos el dinero o no vuelves a ver a tu hijo. It's a, a very interesting project. I believe that, like I said, it's a, creating this kind of content make that the user experience is way greater than just watch it on, on, on the screen. And if you will pardon my expression, it's nice to see a kick-ass woman. I mean, that's really great. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know how that translates into Spanish, but that's... Kick-ass, I believe it's a, 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 a universal word. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, what business models are you seeing for monetizing content? on digital platforms? Well, we see that we, yeah, that, that you have the basic two business models. One, obviously, it's an uh, advertising-based uh, model where you can have not just the, the, the 30 seconds or 10 seconds, but really working with the clients in building platforms that are uh, product integrated in into into the program, and obviously, the, the revenue by the subscriber. No? Either on, on a model like, like several platforms has where you have a uh, uh, X amount of, of dollars per month and it's all you want on the platform or basically one of renting or, or buying of, of a program. And, and we're working on, on both of the models because uh, at the end of the day we believe that the, the production that we do obviously need to have a return on it and, and because you're investing a lot of money on that. And I believe that still there's a lot of piracy but people want to pay for, for good content and good quality to have on the on the screen, so I believe that those two are working parallel, and sometimes they work together. And especially if the content is easy to access, they tend not to mind paying for it or watching a commercial in it. If you have the right price, I mean, if you're not yeah. overcharging, obviously, right. and you make it easy and good quality, I believe that people more because I mean, you see, like I said, a lot of people doing piracy, but you see a lot of people uh, going to to legal content and paying for that. Right, I have. My grown-up son uh, grew up in the mindset that anything on the internet was free, and that drove me crazy because no, it's not. And my younger daughter, even though she uses my credit card, be careful, they learn how to do that very quickly, <laughs> uh, she'll go to iTunes and buy. So the, I think the younger ones are starting to get more used to the fact that if it's just a click and there's mommy's or daddy's credit card, it's easy to buy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that Mexico is going through, has been going through several reforms in many industries, and also broadcast and telecommunications. Um, what do you see, how does this impact Televisa? Is there a prospect of greater competition in the market? Well, there's a prospect of greater competition in the market on the television side because there's two national networks that are going to be in place uh, next year. Uh, Televisa has been actively involved in competition because we I mean, this market is a perfect place. I mean, we've been coming here forever, no? And, and at the end of the day, what this uh, gives you is that here you're competing with the greatest producers in the world, no? And if somebody takes in a channel five o'clock, then you cannot access that five o'clock because there are only one. So we are uh, being in competition worldwide. Then you see our programming competing in the most competed environment in the world, like the United States through Univision, and it, it doesn't only do the great numbers on the Spanish-speaking market, but they do very, very good numbers on the general market. Suddenly, so like in July, we have been for the, for the third time uh, first place, and some of, of the other sweeps were maybe third, fourth, or second. In the general market, when you only have maybe 60 million people speaking Spanish outside of the almost 300 million that there are. No? So I believe that, that the, the, the production facility that we have, the people that are involved in producing the content for Televisa are the best people around to do it. Obviously, we have expanded to do uh, other companies and other co-productions around the world that obviously build this, this, this better content. But I see, on the other hand, a very good opportunity in telecommunications. We have been involved in telecommunications, and I believe that these digital platforms that we were talking uh, before are very important for that content experience and that content production. So. These new uh, laws put in place by, by this administration open that opportunity to us. And if you do an analysis of all the reforms that have been put in place, like the fiscal reform or the energy reform, I believe that they're going to really change the environment of, of Mexico. It's really, there's a lot of opportunities now in Mexico. I believe that this government is really working in not just getting a lot of investment into Mexico, but also helping the companies in Mexico to be international. 
And I see a bright future for the country, and, and, and we obviously want to take part of, of that future and work, not only for Televisa to be a great company, but also to have uh, uh, the best country that we can have and be part of building that. And in that vein, what, what do you see for the future in Televisa? Well, first, I believe that obviously we need to adapt to these new technologies that are very, very important. And and on the other hand, is uh, the format uh, part of the of the of what we do. Formats is something that we started uh, not so long ago. We have uh, had some bright successes on those. Uh, what we have learned when we have worked with formats from outside that we go into Mexico is that working with the people who develop that format and translated into the culture that we have in Mexico, to the culture that we have in Televisa, make a better program. So we have had long lasting relationships with a lot of, uh, of, the, of the media partners that we have. And I believe that formats is an incredible way of putting together a lot of creative people from around the world into one idea and develop it every, every month, every year, a better idea and having those kind of things in the program makes a good quality second season and third season. And, and uh, we have actually the, the last video that we have to, to present is a video about our format. Uh, where, where's Eduardo Clemencia? Eduardo Clemencia is here. Please stand up, Eduardo Clemencia. This is the guy who you can call to buy any of the formats that you're going to watch since we're in the upcoming council. His name is Eduardo Clemencia Herrera, and, uh, and he would be very glad to to, for his sake, to charge you a lot for the formats. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let's see the video about the formats. seguir con las cámaras. Seconds. Yeah, is there is there a, a television time? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We did a good job. <laughs> Last final words about Televisa for the market for MIPCOM. Anything that you'd like to say? No, I, I believe that Televisa has has been here proving that we produce good quality content and that we are uh, very good in developing long lasting relationships. And we are obviously looking forward for that and 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 to build those relationships better and and, and longer. So. Thank you very much for having me here again. Thank you very much, Anna, and, and me, from obviously, to host Mexico as, as, the country, as the country here. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you.